In this episode, we're going to be taking a slight detour away from GitHub Actions and focusing on some of the things that came out from GitHub Universe last week. We're going to explore them both from the announcements and also take a look at some of those features that have already been released. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and we'll be talking about all things cloud. Now we're going to waste no time here and we're going to jump straight in because we've got a fair amount to cover. So you may be aware that uh, over the last week or so, uh, GitHub had a conference known as GitHub Universe. Uh, and there have been quite a number of announcements there, actually. So as we uh, go ahead and uh, just move across there and share the screen, um, what you will see uh, is I'm actually on the uh, GitHub blog. So it's github.blog. Very nice and easy to remember if it's not one you're familiar with. Uh, and at the very top of the screen here, you can see that uh, there's some news from uh, GitHub Universe 2020. And there are, as I say, a number of different announcements that came out last week. Um, and we'll just walk through some of those now. Um, so at a very high level summary, uh, you can really break those down to a few different areas. So GitHub Sponsors, for example, uh, you may have known it was previously uh, launched, is previously there for individuals to go and sponsor different projects and different uh, open source projects. Uh, folks who are supporting those projects but now that can actually be done uh, by companies uh, so if you're a big corporation you depend on a project uh, you can now go ahead and sponsor uh, that open source project uh, which you know is a great way to give back to the community there uh, daily experiences are I guess one of those kind of paper cut scenarios where they're trying to go and really improve that experience. So uh, one of my favorites, and you'll see that I've already turned this on, is uh, is dark mode. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, you've got things like auto merging pull requests when it meets all the criteria from the protected branches. Uh, things like GitHub discussions. Again, we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, and things like dependency reviews, uh, which is rolling out over the coming weeks. So uh, haven't had a chance to play with that one yet. Uh, and then the area where I'm really, really excited about actually is the GitHub Actions uh, improvements, and we will definitely be taking a look at those. I'll show you how I've used those in my Cloud with Chris uh, podcast and uh, how I'm using that for my website releases. And then we'll also apply that to the my.net project that we've been using so far in our uh, in our series. And then there's other things uh, with GitHub Enterprise Server as well. So uh, things like GitHub Actions, for example, are coming to GitHub Enterprise Server, uh, GitHub Packages, the code scanning features, and even mobile support. So um, of course, we have the GitHub Mobile App. Uh, they're now looking at bringing support uh, for GitHub Enterprise Server um, from your phone or your tablet using the GitHub app as well. Um, so there's you know some great features that have actually been released uh, and I think there's a lot of great uh, innovation happening behind GitHub there. So without further ado let's just go ahead and jump to my uh, to my GitHub. Uh, and This is not actually the uh, project I want to show you here. This is a different open source project uh, I'm working on at the moment. Uh, I want to show you my cloudwithchris.com repository. Now, of course, it doesn't matter, firstly, which repository I show you, because what you're looking at is the new dark theme of GitHub. And uh, you can see that actually it's very nice. No longer do we have to rely upon external style sheets or external extensions or anything like that. We have native built in dark mode uh, and the place where you go and get that if I remember rightly um, is over in settings you come to appearances and then over here you can set whether it defaults to the system view or whether it goes for light or dark view there as well so um, I've defaulted to my system view because I use dark mode anyway on my system um, so that's a really nice quality of uh, experience kind of feature there uh, that has been built in uh, good. So if we now uh, jump back to that repository, um, what I want to show you here is the GitHub Actions improvements because I really am a big fan of these. So what I'm first going to do is just navigate back to uh, an older uh, workflow here. Um, so what you can see firstly is we now have a 
refined visual experience here. Um, so we can see, for example, um, those different stages of our workflow. Uh, you can see that I've clearly got a lint code base step, I've got a build step and then I've got some various published steps to uh, different clouds, so Azure, uh, GCP and AWS there. And that looks really nice. Um, we've got this uh, view that we can now interact with. Uh, we can go and see, for example, the fact that um, this particular stage has passed here. Um, obviously, the build one has passed as well. Um, and then all these other jobs that are here as well, Azure, GCP, AWS. Um, but we can go back to that summary and get a nice heads up view. So this experience looks fairly similar if you've used it to Azure DevOps, but it's nice to see um, this kind of release view coming in and this uh, overall workflow experience view and this visualization. But one of the things that frustrates me, or I should say frustrated me, as we'll see in a moment, is the fact that all of my publish steps are kind of bundled together. You know, it's just we do a lint the code base, we build it, and then we go and publish out to different environments. But for me, what I care about is I want to be able to go ahead and see who's who is that environment depending upon you know are we waiting for an approver are we waiting for someone to go ahead and allow that change to go into that environment and that just didn't exist in github actions until today so as of the 15th of december uh, this is now rolling out into uh, beta on github actions and that is the functionality to do with deployments inside of github actions so uh, the reason that I chose one of my older workflows is uh, what you'll see here. You can see now that I have those releases uh, separated out into what they look like different stages effectively. Um, now, each of these different stages, if we want to call them that for now, uh, are effectively mapping back to different environments. So if I just navigate across to my repository settings here, you will see on the left hand side, I now have a new tab called environments. And if I click on that, you can see that I have a number of uh, different environments I've already configured. Uh, so three staging environments and a production environment. And you can see by production environments, I have a protection rule. So if we click on that production environment, uh, what you'll see is I have a rule that I need a required reviewer and I need one uh, reviewer, that person is myself. Um, so anytime that there's a push into that environment or a deployment into that environment, then Chris Reddington needs to go and approve that. We can, of course, set uh, wait timers as well. So an amount of time to wait uh, before we allow that deployments to go into that environment. So maybe if you have any monitoring on a previous environment, for example, you just want to hold off, make sure that you know, the dust has settled and all of your alerts and metrics are, you know, all looking good, nothing is triggering and nothing's going wrong, then go ahead and uh, progress into our next environment here. But one of the other things you can now do as well is also have secrets on a per environment basis. Um, so you could have them uh, and I, I guess a repository level uh, previously, whereas now you can go ahead and uh, have them on an environment by environment basis. So if you think about the scenario where I've got Azure credentials here, a good practice is to use principle of least privilege. So I wouldn't want to give my, uh, you know, a service principle access to my staging environment and my production environment, because if I get the wrong name in my configuration file and I accidentally redeploy over something that I didn't want to redeploy over, uh, you know, that's obviously something bad that we don't want to happen. And of course, if those credentials get breached somehow, again, blast radius, minimizing that as much as we can is a good practice. So the fact now we can have uh, secrets per environment is a really, really great thing there, combined with those approvers per environment as well. So I've been talking a lot about environments. And if we jump back to this uh, visualization view here, um, you'll notice that somehow also it knows the URL of my environment, like I can go and click on this link and I can go and see the staging site for my uh, for my website itself. So what is going on here? Because GitHub needs to know somehow what environments um, map to those different stages of my GitHub action workflow, um, as you see here in my environments. So 
if I just jump across to VS Code here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my uh, Cloud with Chris repository here, and I'm going to show you some of the uh, workflow files that I've been working on. Um, so, of course, I still have my normal generic workflow template, if you like. And uh, you can see I've got my jobs. Uh, my linting job was the first one. Then we build. You saw that earlier. Um, and then I have my different publish steps. Now, the difference now, if I just uh, zoom in a little bit here, just to make sure this is really, really clear for everyone, is these environment settings right here. So right now, VS Code uh, still thinks that that is an illegal property. It's not allowed. Um, but this is literally the repository you just saw a moment ago. So it's absolutely fine. It's just, uh, I guess, uh, the tooling hasn't quite caught up yet to these changes because, as I say, they're rolling out today. Um, you can see that I've got this key for environment. And we're mapping the name of that environment to staging.azure. And if we just... Uh, bring across here, uh, we can see that we have this staging.azure, and that is effectively the environment it's mapping to. So if I wanted to have some kind of uh, reviewer for that staging environment, I can go and do that. I just come in here and, uh, you know, put in the appropriate name there, no problems at all. Um, so let's go and check that out, because, you know, all, it, it looks really simple, right? All I've got to do is add that environment uh, key there and uh, the associated information. So as you know, I've already done this because I showed you uh, the file here where we have it. Um, so the environment property and the name property there. Um, but I've also done that for my master workflow as well. So if we just take a look at that publish step, you can see I've got my environment and you can see there's a slight problem here with this that I need to be careful with, production.azure. And we need to go and put the URL in here. Um, so let's just double check that the environment names match up here because that is very important. So we've got production.azure there. And we've got that in the file here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just commit that change. Um, so fix environment name. There we go. We'll go and commit that. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab my GPG key, which again is another tip I recommend, by the way, something we haven't talked about, but um, to make sure my commits are definitely from me and signed by me um, using a GPG key, um, so private public key pair, uploading the public key to GitHub, and then it definitely is uh, confirmed that it, and verified that it is me there. Good. So uh, we've just published that change to that branch. So we should see that workflow being triggered, which we have. Uh, now, remember, the workflow that we just changed is the master workflow. So or the main workflow um, in uh, kind of newer repositories that have changed the branching terminology. Um, I'm just going to go ahead here and uh, merge that in. I'm going to override that uh, with my administrator privileges because I have no one else to approve that for me. Uh, and we can see that has now been merged. So if we jump over to our GitHub actions, we can see the uh, master workflow has now been triggered. So if we take a look at the build, we'll see that the build is going to go ahead and uh, trigger as it normally would. Uh, and if we just click in here, we can see that already we're uploading the website as an artifact and that all looks good. That's all running as expected. So if we jump back to the summary here, you can see now uh, underneath this publish step, it's saying production.azure is waiting for review. And Chris Reddington requested your review to deploy to production Azure. So you can see how now it's not going to progress. And this is something we've wanted uh, in the deployment space for quite some time with GitHub Actions, that ability to have this manual approval step. So if I come in here, click on this review deployment, I can review the pending deployments and say, um, staging environment looks good. Let's deploy to live. There we go. And 
there we go you can see that uh, i've done that approval there which environment we're talking about and you can see now uh, the comment underneath there as well so as a result of my approval now happening we can see that the job is now progressing and moving forwards so let's think back because the last session that we did was actually about deploying our dot net workload uh, to the cloud right so let's jump across to our workflow file and just refresh our memory here so we have on a push and that's any push uh, the workflow is my.NET project sample, that's our web app name, that's our source package, and that's our.NET version. And then what we're doing is we're just going to deploy the infrastructure, uh, and then we're also going to make sure that we deploy uh, to, the, um, to the application itself. So what we can do in here, as an example, if I just uh, copy over just to uh, avoid any uh, any issues with my typing here there we go uh, what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, put in here this environment property um, i can go ahead and say infrastructure.azure for example and infrastructure doesn't have a url so we'll get rid of that uh, and then what we can do is we can go ahead and put an environment in our build and deploy the application as well. Uh, and we gave that a web app name of this thing here. So we'll just go ahead and call that something like .azurewebsites.net. Um, now notice that if we jump back to that my.net app repository, we haven't set up environments yet. Um, so let's do it for one and not the other. And you'll see why um, I want to show you this. So here's the my.net project. We will jump into the settings and we'll go into the environments and we'll configure it for the, um, for the second environment that we're working on there, which is, uh, of course, production.azure we're calling it. Could call it application.azure, but production.azure works for now. And of course, this is a different repository, so uh, a different environment. So now I'm going to go ahead and add myself as a reviewer there, uh, and we'll save those protection rules. There we go. Good. So um, what we'll do now is we'll commit those changes. So add GitHub Action Environments. There we go. Add that commit stage signed off once again we need that gpg key so i'm just going to go and get that here there we go good and we'll push those changes up so now let's jump into our github actions and take a look at what's going on so we can see that the uh the workflow has been triggered there and you can see that uh, already it has requested my review uh, the reason why it's been triggered so early on is because this uh this stage i guess in my workflow uh doesn't have any dependencies before it so all of my dependencies uh, all of my different stages i should say uh kick off at the very beginning there um, but what we can see of course is the deploy infrastructure uh, step is uh, you know scheduling and uh, beginning to run itself there but the reason i wanted to show you the one uh, being created and the other not is because look at this here i didn't create that infrastructure.azure environment in the GitHub UI. I did that in the workflow file. So GitHub will automatically create any environments that are not yet defined in this area for you. Now, that's important to understand for a number of reasons. You know, you want to make sure you're consistent with your environments so that you make sure you're deploying to the environments that you think you are and you've got the right protections in place so that is the magic between the workflow file and this environments area that you see here as well uh, you need to make sure that that particular name key uh, or name value i guess um, this particular aspect here matches up because that is what applies those uh, protection rules to that particular uh, piece of your workflow there okay so 
that in a nutshell is really the changes that have come with uh, with GitHub Actions there. And of course, you can see that uh, I've got some issues there with my deployment, but I can fix that another time. But it serves the purpose of what we wanted to show there. So at this point, actually, um, I would go and prevent that from uh, deploying. So I've just gone ahead and rejected that from deploying uh, because, of course, the infrastructure has not yet uh, been deployed. So there's no point deploying the application to infrastructure that isn't there. So with that, that in a nutshell is some of the things that happened last week with uh, GitHub Universe. So once again, github.blog definitely uh, subscribe to that and uh, you know make sure you check regularly what's going on there uh, take a look at the github blog for the uh, github universe pieces as there are some new features uh, coming and of course if you're using github actions definitely start looking into that beta around uh, deployments there so thank you for watching and stay tuned until the next in our github action series bye for now